Hey guys, welcome back to another glute workout. I hope you're all doing well and enjoy your Christmas holidays and are now preparing for the new year. Today, I'm going to be taking you through a glute focused workout where I basically only target the glutes, completely neglect my quads and do a bit of hamstrings. I started off with some dynamic stretches. I did some standing leg swings to warm up my hips, then I continued with these things. I don't know for sure what they're called, but back when I played soccer when I was 10, we called these open the gate, close the gate. I actually think that's the proper name, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, I also did some butterfly stretches and some lunge stretches to really make sure that everything is warm and that I'm ready to do my heavy lifts to avoid injury. After that, I got into my workout doing some hip abductions. I love to start my glute workouts with the hip abduction machine because it's a great way to warm up the glutes. Also, I tend to sometimes forget to include side booty exercises into my workouts, especially if I'm in a rush. So it's great to just get it out of the way at the beginning just in case. And interestingly enough, I also find that I cramp while doing this movement if I do it at the end of a full workout. I don't know why this happens, but it happens to me almost every single time to the point where I have to stop the exercise because it just hurts too much. I like to do my hip abductions as a type of drop set. I start off with the weight at the heaviest that I can do, then after doing 10 to 12 reps, I lower the weight and continue immediately with the movement. I'll lower the weight 3 to 4 times and then I'm off the machine. To feel the movement in your glutes more, lean forward and hold onto the machine or hold your hands in a kind of prayer position in front of you. On a regular glute day, I usually make my first heavy lift the hip thrust. However, someone was using the Smith machine so I decided to start with RDLs and then after the RDLs I realized that I forgot to take my padding from home and didn't want to use the sweaty gym one so I skipped the exercise altogether. But I highly recommend that you include it in your workouts because they're really one of the best exercises. I'm starting off with zero weight to warm up my hamstrings and get my form right. Then I'm moving into 20 kgs on both sides. Today was a special day for me because I decided to try wearing a lifting belt again. I bought a belt a couple of months ago to protect my back, but despised wearing it because it's just so tight and I often have an upset stomach from anxiety, so having a tight belt around was very uncomfortable. However, I started to worry a bit about my back and therefore wanted to try it again. And honestly, I love it. Seriously, guys, I recommend getting a lifting belt when you start lifting heavy. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> the RDL is one of the best glute exercises and is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite exercises to do in the gym. When performed correctly, this exercise will strengthen all of the posterior chain muscles and the back. And with the proper mind to muscle connection, you'll really feel the pull in your glutes. To do this exercise, bend your knees slightly, hinge your hips, and don't let your shoulders slump. Keep your spine in a neutral position and don't arch your lower back. I'm doing 8 reps for the 20 kgs and 5 reps when I increase the weight to 25 kgs for each side. I personally do not like to exceed the 8 reps when I lift heavy because I'm just too worried about my back and I don't want to take any risks in the gym. With the 20 kgs on each side, I did 8 reps and 3 sets. When I increased the weight to 25 kgs on each side, I did 5 reps, only 1 set. And honestly guys, lifting with the belt was amazing. Please, if you're lifting heavy, get yourself a belt. Your body will thank you. Next, I moved to the Smith machine to do another one of my favorite exercises, the box squat. Guys, seriously, I attribute most of my glute growth to this movement, so please include it in your workout program. The box squat is a variation of the regular squat that limits your range of motion and activates your glutes more. To do this movement, you need a bench or anything that's at the right height to allow you to stop your squat when you're at a 90 degree angle. It's important that you don't actually sit down at the bottom of the squat. Instead, you should just slightly tap your bottom on the bench and then get right back up. If you fully sit down, you'll actually cause your back and spine to bend in a position that could lead to injury. To feel this movement more in your glutes, keep your feet in a narrow stance facing forward. From my experience, doing some glute activation before will really help you to feel this in your glutes. But I'd say that any heavy lift that you're doing before that targets your glutes 
is considered glute activation. Therefore, I'm only recommending that you go out of your way to do a five min activation exercise if you make this your first lift. The box squat minimizes your quad activation and maximizes your glute activation. I prefer doing this exercise over the regular squat because I'm currently not so keen on getting larger quads. I think that big quads are absolutely beautiful, but I actually used to have quite muscular quads in the past and didn't love the chafing that came with it. So for now, quad growth isn't really one of my goals and I'm focusing more on my glutes. Therefore, a lot of my workouts are more glute and hamstrings focused and less quad focused. However, please don't hold this to me because I might change my mind. And I do squat with the free weights once a week or once every two weeks. I did four sets of 10 reps and increased the weight as I realized I could go heavier with the belt. And also guys, seriously, pile on the weight. This is not as dangerous as the real squat because you're on the machine it's gonna protect you. Just really push yourselves and increase the weight. Next, we're moving on to one of the most dreaded exercises out there, the Bulgarian split squat, but on the Smith machine. I've done this exercise with dumbbells before and still sometimes do it like that. However, I always end up coming back to the Smith machine because I find that it's the most comfortable way to do the Bulgarian split squats. Using the Smith machine really helps you with your balance as doing this movement with dumbbells can often be a little bit wobbly. The Bulgarian split squat is a unilateral movement, meaning that only one leg at a time is being trained. It's absolutely incredible for glute growth and helps you to avoid and overcome muscle imbalances. If you feel that this exercise is more difficult to do on one side than on the other, and you're motivated enough, do an extra set on that side. To do this exercise in the gym, get a bench that is at a comfortable height and step out. To activate your glutes more, step out further from the bench and make sure to go down to at least 90 degrees. However, I recommend going down even lower because you'll feel the burn so much more. I'm doing eight reps per side and I'm taking a break between both sides. So I do one side, eight reps, I pause, I do the other side, eight reps, I pause, and then I go back to the other side and I do three sets of this. I do sets of low rec count because I do not always enjoy this exercise and I'd rather compromise in rep count than force myself to do something and then lose motivation in the long term. I find that this is the perfect in-between of comfort and pushing myself because yes, with the eight reps, I still really, really push myself. Once I finished my main lifts, I moved on to accessory movements. Accessory movements are highly beneficial to grow and shape your glutes, but they're not as important as the main lifts such as the squat, deadlift, hip thrust, and so forth. Therefore, it's recommended that you do your heavier lifts at the beginning of a workout and then move on to accessory movements. A workout where you only do accessory movements won't grow your glutes as much as including heavy compound movements. However, it's still fun and the gym is all about fun and I actually have a video coming out soon where I'm only doing accessory movements. So here I'm doing a cable goblet squat. To do these, go very near to the machine and hold the bar in the way that I'm holding it. I don't really know how to describe it, but you know, with the bar under your chin and your arms in front of you. Be sure to take a wide stance and really push from your heels. I did three sets of 10 reps. Next, I'm doing some cable deadlifts. These are really good to warm up and or cool down your hamstrings, but obviously they're not as effective as heavy deadlifts. With the cable goblet squat, you can actually go pretty heavy, but with this, you'll just not be able to go as heavy as if you would just have the proper bar in front of you and just pile on the weight. Anyways, when doing this exercise, make sure that you don't use your arms to pull the cable. Instead, keep your arms neutral and let your hamstrings do all the work really lean forward to get a nice stretch in your hammies. This is one of my favorite accessory exercises for the glutes. Yes, they are quite awkward to do because at the end you have to squeeze your glutes and if you're wearing leggings it doesn't look so cute, but trust me, they work your glutes so, 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 so good. And they also manage to hit all parts of your glutes. 
And honestly, yeah, I don't see many people doing this in the gym, so I understand that it might take some time to get used to them, but trust me, they are so worth it. Also, when I started doing these, I really struggled with my arm strength because my arms would get exhausted really quick. I noticed that my glutes could handle way more weight, way more reps, but my arms just would not allow it. And this actually motivated me to start working out my arms more. To do this exercise, hold the cable accessory by the balls and pull them through your legs. Yes, yeah, sorry for calling them balls, but I don't know what else to call them. Anyways, walk out, so step out quite far from the cable and then, and then start doing the exercise. Keep your arms neutral and let the cable retract. When you pull up, make sure that you're only pulling from your glutes. At the end, squeeze your glutes like they owe you money because that's where the highest muscle activation is and that's where you're targeting all areas of your glutes. I did 10 to 12 reps and 3 sets for this exercise. Next, I did some cable sidekicks to target the sides of my glutes. I recommend decreasing the weight with this and focusing on your reps. Do between 10 to 15 per side. I did 10 to 15 per side and I did only 2 sets because I didn't want to do more, but I would recommend doing 3 and being better than me. Okay, finally we're at the end of the workout. To finish off the workout, I did some glute hip extensions. This exercise is wonderful because it targets the upper area of your glutes for a shelf booty. I do these regularly, however, I struggle with them a bit because I tend to get really dizzy with the movement. Um, anyways, to feel these in your glutes more, look down and keep your shoulders curled downward. And really, really squeeze when you get up. I did two sets of eight because of how dizzy I get, but I recommend doing three sets of ten.